Welcome to this LinkedIn workshop. Um, my name is Alicia. I am also a third year, so I'm kind of in the same boat as you. Um, and I am majoring in neuroscience. I'm a career peer at the Office of Internship and Career Development. And this is sort of what we do. Um, we look through LinkedIn profiles, we look through resumes, um, cover letters, CVs, all sorts of things. Um, so we're kind of just here to give you guys a little piece of um, what we usually do and kind of ex explain the importance and the, um, the process of having a good LinkedIn profile. Yeah, and I'm Kira. I am a senior. I'm also a career peer and I work as a CWS tutor as well. And I'm really excited to be hosting this workshop with Alicia. So let's get started. So first, when we were creating this presentation, uh, we thought it was really important to let you know the ways in which people will be viewing and interacting with your profile, because that can set you up to understand which parts of your profile you should pay the most attention to, and also let you get a better understanding of what LinkedIn is and what it can do for you. So I have two examples here of how people will be interacting with your profile. And the first is in a search. So if someone is not connected to you, um, but they go to the search function of LinkedIn and maybe they put in third year psychology major Agnes Scott, they'll have a bunch of listings populate with people who are ideally third year psychology majors from Agnes Scott. And what will show up in that listing for that search result is your name, your photo, your headline, which we'll talk about in a bit, your location, and if you have any common connections. Now, if you choose to apply to a job on um, LinkedIn, the recruiter or the person managing the listing will get an email when you hit apply, and that email will have your name, your headline again, your current job title, which is something that you put on LinkedIn, as well as past job titles, the name of your educational institute, which would just be Agnes Scott College, the number of recommendations you have, and the number of connections that you have on LinkedIn. So I wanted to share that with you to inform the types of things that people see most frequently on your LinkedIn profile. And Alicia is going to take over how you can make those parts of your profile really pop. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, so that was a little bit about what people will see. Um, we'll kind of break down each component of it now. Um, so first things first, I think we can all, you know, attest to looking at people's pictures on any social media or any sort of platform is, that's the first thing that we look at, their picture. So you don't wanna be that person who has just, a, you know, the logo with nothing on it. Um, I personally would recommend going for a picture first. So put your name on your LinkedIn profile and put up a profile picture. Um, you wanna make sure that it's, you know, a clear picture, a high quality picture, um, something that isn't too distracting and isn't too, um, out of the ordinary, but something that, you know, expresses who you are and um, can be, it can be a headshot, but it doesn't necessarily have to be one of those. It can just be a picture of you, um, you know, in a, in a professional setting. So, um, like, for example, my picture was actually taken at home that I use for my LinkedIn profile right now, but um, it just has a plain background and it's just, you know, my upper body so they can really see who I am. And then there's your background picture. Um, this picture is just as important as your profile picture. It doesn't have to be a picture of you, of you or anything really that you're doing, um, but it should be a picture of something that you can relate to or that you, that you feel um, kind of maybe describes who you are. So um, you can see in this example, um, you can see that Marina's background picture is Meal Pal, so that is her, the company that she works for. Um, and then Leah, on the other hand, there is a picture of herself. Um, she's doing something extraordinary and um, it's not very distracting. So she's there, there's a background, but there's nothing that's taking away from her individual profile picture or the rest of her profile. 
So that's what you want to make sure when you're putting up a background picture. My background picture right now um, has something to do with, um, you know, medical professionals of all different backgrounds. Um, and I think that was really relevant to what I wanted to express in my LinkedIn profile, which is why I chose that image. So it's nice to, it's a nice way to kind of, you know, you know how they say a picture says a thousand words. So it's a nice way to do that through your profile. All right. So the next thing after your profile picture is your headline. So your headline um, shows off sort of your skill set and it gives yourself a title. So for some examples, you can see here, there's social media branding specialist seeking marketing internship. So the formula that you can formula that you can sort of use here is what you are now and what you're looking for. So you do want to, um, you know, if you're a student, then you might want to say a neuroscience student or um, and then pursuing, you know, whatever it is. So in this case, you can see that there's a business marketing student who says seeking challenging posi uh, summer position. So that explains to anyone who looks at your profile that, hey, you're a student, you're an undergrad, and you're looking for something to do in the summer. So maybe if they're recruiting, they know that you're the person to go to. So as short as the headline is, the summary is the complete opposite. So you're, the headline is a one-liner to kind of express who you are, and then you have a summary. And the summary really breaks down um, who you are, what motivates you, um, what you're good at, and what you're looking to do in the future, right? So um, this is kind of where you get to express yourself. Um, so there's no particular format for how you should make your summary, but get to talk a little bit about a little bit about who you are what you do at school um maybe what you're doing outside of school it's if it's something relevant to what you want to express on your profile and then what you're planning to do in the future this way when someone looks at your profile they can understand if um if you're the right candidate for maybe the position that they're they're looking for um and this summary can be seen by um anyone who looks you up so you want to put that kind of information on there that you're open to having um, really anyone on LinkedIn looking at. So, um, so when they click on your profile, they can so far they can see your profile picture, they can see your background picture, they can see your headline, and they can see your summary. So um, those are some very important components because those really set the tone for who you are and what, um, what kind of positions you might be fit for. experience so um this is what it says um this category is sort of where you can talk more about what you've done in the past and the best advice for this section is to really just use your resume um you can take exactly what you have written in your resume and um translate it onto linkedin it's a very easy process um and it's a very important step because you're Oftentimes recruiters or someone who wants to network with you wants to see where you've been and where you'll be able to go. So just as much as your summary is important as it tells you, as it tells people about your future goals, your experiences will tell them about what you've done in the past. And of course you don't, you don't want to miss an opportunity to show off. So this is that chance. And you can kind of see the, um, kind of the formatting of the of the experiences on LinkedIn, it's very, very similar to what you do on your resume. So <clears throat> you have where you've interned, how long you've interned there, and then kind of um, a couple bullet points explaining what you did. And then the good thing about um, LinkedIn is you can include a link to the, you know, to where you work or where uh, what experiences you have, and you can also include images or anything that would really reflect what you did. So that's something that is different from a resume itself, um, but it's, it's helpful. And lastly, we have the extras. So extras are sort of um, keywords that um, you, know, you associate yourself with. So if someone is um, you know, just looking up you know, publications or they're looking for someone who has certain courses 
um, and has certain experiences, they, they might just look that up and then they'll see a whole pool of um, candidates and you would be in that because you've included this in your list. If you don't include the extras, it's okay, but it does reduce the chances of someone looking up your profile and finding you on LinkedIn and networking with you because they're oftentimes they're looking for very specific people and very specific categories. And this um, component of LinkedIn helps them to find people that way. So I would highly suggest um, including any accomplishments, sort of like in the resume where we have a reward section. This is where you can include those. Um, any background um, that you may want to include is this is the spot to do that. Um, and you know, any software skills or any anything that you feel like would make you stand out and would be something that um, a recruiter or someone who wants to network is looking for, you this is the place to list that. Okay, so before we move on to how you can use LinkedIn, does anyone have any questions about setting up your profile, the types of things to include? Um, yeah, any questions kind of about what Alicia talked about and feel free to unmute yourself um, or you can put it in the chat and I'll wait a couple of moments for folks to ask those questions. Okay, I'm going to wait one more minute in case somebody's typing. Yeah, thanks, Alicia. Okay, well, we will have more question time at the end. So now I'm going to jump into networking. And this section is kind of about how you can use LinkedIn to make the connections that are going to get you that opportunity that you really want. And LinkedIn has some really cool features that you can use that are just set up to benefit you. So the first one I wanted to talk about is this feature where you can search alumni um, from Agnes Scott College. And I'm actually going to tab over to my LinkedIn profile to show you how to do this. So can you give me a thumbs up if you can see my LinkedIn profile? Thumbs up from Alicia, great. Oh, I got a thumbs up. Okay, wonderful. So what you can do is go to the search bar and search Agnes Scott College. Sometimes what you'll have pop up is these separate groups, which are like Agnes Scott College grad studies, kind of groups that people have formed to, you know, get people to join together, which you could look at and view that might be helpful. But the way that you're going to use this feature is by clicking on the one that says school, because that's what we are. And you'll see this is like Agnes Scott's page, kind of like you have your own page. And if you go down to alumni, you'll see this kind of crazy tool. And the way it works is that there are several different ways you can filter um, alumni to find people that would be really great for you to connect with. So you can filter by start year and end year, which I think means like graduation year. And so if I wanted to find someone who was like really early in their career, I could put in, I don't know, 2015 to 2020, right? Or I could specifically search for people who are already several years into their career. Maybe if I'm looking for someone who probably has more hiring privileges, um, that's a way that you could use that feature. You can search the alumni by title, keyword or company, which is pretty self-explanatory, but I've used it when I was trying to understand like what kind of jobs I could do with knowledge of JavaScript, right? I could put in JavaScript, see which Agnes Scott folks kind of know that language, 
look at their profiles, see what kind of jobs they have, and then ultimately connect with them. So these sections are kind of if you already have some ideas in mind, but I'm going to show you more here. Here are some of kind of the pre-filtered um, suggestions that LinkedIn has for you. So you can search by where people live. I mean, this is great for me because I want to stay in Atlanta. So you can click Greater Atlanta, where they work, a lot of people at Agnes Scott. And if you're looking at a specific company like AT&T, you can just click AT&T and view all 17 alumni who have worked there. Um, you'll see even farther that there are more ways you can filter. So you can filter by kind of the sector that they're in. I find this a little limiting sometimes because I maybe want to find someone who isn't necessarily limited to a sector, but a type of role. So you can use that or not. If you're earlier in your search and you're trying to figure out what you can do with your major, with your degree, you can sort by major. And also what they are skilled at. So on LinkedIn, um, I think I can show you on my profile, they have this way to add skills, which is where you can essentially type in a bunch of different skills and, and add them. Um, frankly, I find it more effective to list them within your experience section and talk about how you used them. But if you really wanted to figure out how someone with your skill set was succeeding in their role, you could search by, you know, Microsoft Office, research, all this great stuff. So this is a really incredible tool. And I'm pretty sure you can filter by multiple categories. So let's click Greater Atlanta. Yes, you can select one and then select another descriptor, right? So I could say Greater Atlanta. Um, I want to work at the CDC and boom, it starts to pull up all of these alumni who have worked at the CDC. So that is really cool. Um, the second thing that I wanted to show you was how you can use LinkedIn as a job search website. So if you go to, I believe it's right up here, jobs. It kind of functions like Indeed if you've been on another um, or any other kind of job search site. You can search by, you know, title, skill, company, the area. You can have saved searches. So if anything, if any job is posted for web developer in the Atlanta metropolitan area, I get a little ping <laughs> and I go look at it. And you can also, once you're in that search, here, I'll click on a random job, senior front end developer. Um, you can then go to the company's page. You can see who posted it. Maybe you know that person or there's a way for you to get to know that person. And you can apply through the site. And so when we were talking earlier about recruiters will get an email when you apply via LinkedIn, this is how you would apply via LinkedIn. So that was kind of a really quick walkthrough of how you can, how LinkedIn works and how you can make LinkedIn work for you. And we have time, nine minutes, I believe, for questions. So once again, you can use the little participants raise hand or unmute yourself. It's a small group. And um, you can also put questions in the chat. And Alicia and I will be here to answer them. Thank you so much for coming to our presentation.